What's up, you guys? Coming back at you all with another 10 underrated commander cards. As always, we're going to look over 10 cards that, in my opinion, I feel are underrated or undervalued in any way. Not necessarily for the same play style, but you get what I'm saying. They're good cards. They have potential to see even more play. And I feel like if you don't already know about these cards, then the whole purpose of this video is to help some people out. So we're going to start it off here with the first one, which is Pyxis of Pandemonium. Just an awesome one mana artifact that can tap each player exiles the top card of his or her library face down. And and then has a second activated ability of 7 mana, also taps, sacrifice Pyxis of Pandemonium. Each player turns face up all cards he or she owns, exiled with Pyxis of Pandemonium. Then they put all permanent cards among them onto the battlefield. This card has potential to see a ton of play in Chaos. I don't always see it there, which is kind of a surprise to me, but it's just a really crazy cool artifact. It's super efficient. Most people don't really care about it, maybe until the late game they might, but this really doesn't have the potential to mill anyone out. It's just going to do it once it turns unless you're capable of tapping and untapping it with like a paradox engine which is really the only reason why I would be afraid of this card but other than that it's just going to store up a lot of cards because you want to be able to crack it and then just have everyone get their permanents back so the only players that maybe don't really care about that are the ones who are playing instants and sorceries things that aren't considered permanents but other than that most people they don't mind this card they want it to survive they want it to do some damage because they think they have the best permanents the next card is heirloom blade this was from command 2017 one of those tribal theme equipments equipped creature gets plus three plus one but not really that big of a deal because whenever equipped creature dies you get to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it and then you put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order yeah it doesn't give you the creature straight to the battlefield but who really cares because it's going to give you a replacement creature maybe not as good as that creature but you have the potential of getting something in return for your creature dying another added bonus to a lot of equipment equipments is the cheaper equip cost of just one mana. A lot of people may be confused about the efficiency of equipment cards, but you have to take into consideration the equip cost, so it's really like four mana for this spell for it to have any sort of impact, unless you have anything that can reduce equip cost, which most cards don't do that. Still a pretty sweet card, throw it into vampires, throw it into zombies, whatever deck you can easily kill off your tribal creatures, I think it works out pretty well in. And then the last artifact we have here is a boom pile. Now this is very similar to Nevenural's disc, another four mana artifact that's going to deal with permanents that however can only deal with creatures artifacts and enchantments this can deal with all permanents so it is a little bit more effective if you're able to win the flip which is the only downside to this card is that you are leaving it to random chance there is a chance that you are going to lose the flip and it doesn't do anything. That's the main deterrence for this card. But when you think about it, the main difference between Nevin Rolls Disc and Boom Pile right off the bat, Nevin Rolls Disc comes into play tapped. So in a way, you're going to have to wait a turn with Niv's Disc anyway. But with Boom Pile, you have a 50-50 shot of being able to use it. So even if you don't get it the first time, you're likely going to get it the second time unless you're just completely unlucky. So the chances of you getting this within the first two tries, you're probably going to do it. Hopefully you don't lose both flips but still I think it's pretty effective the fact that it is able to tap immediately again one of those cards that I could definitely see being flavorful with chaos decks for that whole reason of coin flipping then we move on to white we have field of souls a four mana enchantment whenever a non token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield put a 1-1 one -one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield so this is very similar to Teso or Zoth Scion it is a little bit different though because it's just non token creatures instead of black creatures but basically going to be a good card if you're playing on a budget at least for Tesa because it's exactly what you want. You want more white creatures that you're able to sacrifice and then exile more creatures your opponents control. I think that's pretty sweet but even outside of that if you have any sort of synergies with spirits or creature tokens I think this is a good card. You get some value to replace whatever you lose. Not the most explosive enchantment, not anything that's going to combo super easily. Still something to consider for a lot of those white decks. And then we have Divine Reckoning. Those flashback cards from Innistrad are incredible. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls and then destroys destroys the rest. So this is obviously going to fit in pretty well with Voltron decks. Anything where you really only need one good creature out there, and chances are in white that's going to be the case more often than not. The cool thing about this is that if you are playing Voltron, you're likely going to match up pretty well with your opponent's creatures. If they choose to have one creature, it's probably not going to stand up pretty well against your one creature, because you probably have a whole bunch of auras, equipments attached that are going to make that creature impressive. And you have an added benefit here of the flashback, which flashback is really unexpected 
expected. Not a lot of people see it coming. It's just sitting in your graveyard. And then you pay that seven mana, which is a lot, but it's definitely worth it if you need to deal that damage quicker, get around your opponent's creatures, stuff like that. Pretty sweet card. Then we have Forgotten Creation. I think this is actually a pretty good creature, not as underrated as a lot of the other cards on this list. The Skulk doesn't really matter too much, but at the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand. If you do, you draw that many cards. So it is a May, so it's not something forced like Teferi's Puzzle Box, and it only works for you. So if you don't want to give your opponent's card draw, you don't have to. Cool thing about this is that there's a ton of ways to synergize with your self-drawing cards. We, of course, have things like Psychosis Crawler, Niv Mazette, anything that works well with you drawing cards only, I think is pretty sweet. But obviously, where this card is going to fit in pretty well is blue zombies, blue black zombies, or even Grixis zombie decks. Anything where you need blue for zombies, Forgotten Creation is definitely a must-have for those decks. You don't always have the best card draw. Your entire focus is going to be on the zombie tribe, so you maybe don't have room for anything else. So getting your utility out of your zombies is pretty sweet. And then we have Curse of Misfortunes. I really want to push the Curse tribe. I don't know what you would call it, but it's a pretty cool deck type. Not too many of them out there because a lot of the curses are rather linear. They don't really impact multiple players. This one, however, is really neat because it's a Curse Tutor. So even though this also only impacts one player, you are able to really bully them out of the game. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library for a Curse card that doesn't have the same name as a Curse attached to it. No problemo, this is a singleton format. You put it onto the battlefield attached to that player, and then you shuffle your library. So out of a lot of the curses, there's some pretty deadly ones, ones that are going to force your opponents to sacrifice creatures, ones that are going to completely just neuter your opponent's creatures and make it really easy for you to get over them. So if curses get more support, I can definitely see something like this being in higher demand, but as for now, I can definitely understand why it's underrated. Then we have Promise of Power. This card is amazing. It's one of those entwined cards where you can pay four mana and then you get both of the modes, but you choose one, you get to draw five cards and then you lose five life, or you put a black demon creature token with flying into play with power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. So obviously you pay four more mana, so it's going to be nine mana total. You get to entwine it, you get both, which is awesome because you draw five cards and then you get that demon who's going to be pretty massive but card draw is always nice and even if you settle for just five for five I think that's pretty nice as well card draw isn't that simple anymore you usually have to pay three mana for two cards or four mana for three cards getting five mana for five cards is always nice even if it is at the cost of five life as well that's the cool thing about black is that it kind of gets around things by making you pay life which in commander usually isn't a big deal but also giving you a creature as well means that you have a way to defend yourself and you have a way to swing at your opponent opponents with a large flying creature. While it may not be the most impressive cantrip, it is 5 mana. At the very least, you still have the option of settling for a demon creature as well. And you know me, I love cards with options, and I always love it when you can settle for the least amount of mana and still get something in return. Moving on from that, we have Besmirch. This was from Conspiracy 2, and I don't know what it is, but I just don't see this card in Commander. It's actually quite brilliant. If you want to build a deck around Active Treason cards, which there are a bunch of decks that like using Active Treason effects, Besmirch is definitely one to look out for. It's pretty much the same mana cost, but until end of turn you gain control of the creature, it gains haste, untap, and goad that creature. So goad basically means until your next turn that creature attacks each combat if able, and attacks a player other than you if able. So not only do you get to steal that creature, swing with it, if it's the best creature, that's probably what you want to do. But after that's done, that creature can attack you, but it has to attack. So in a multiplayer game, this card is perfect, because like other goad cards, like Disrupt Decorum, this is going to force your opponents to really pick on each other. This one is awesome because you get to swing with that creature first, and then that creature gets to swing at an opponent. This could be really deadly against certain Voltron decks really putting the pressure on your other opponents, as well as having a way to really deal some damage to them, I think is pretty sweet. And then the last card we have to look at is a Benefactor's Draft. Just a two mana green instant, which a lot of good instants in green are going to deal with fogging. You untap all creatures until end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks, you draw a card. So this is going to be a little bit different because it doesn't really protect your creatures, but it does kind of deter your opponents from blocking. But what it does give you at the very least is a way to draw a card for two mana instant speed that's at the worst case scenario because you're going to draw a card regardless you get even more card draw for each creature your opponent wants to block with so in a deck where you want to keep the pressure on your opponents this is exactly what you want green has some really weird ways of drawing cards but this is definitely a pretty decent one and this was from commander 2016 not something super expensive but definitely going to give you some extra value pretty decent cantrip in green but anyway guys that's going to do it for this video hope you enjoyed these 10 underrated commander cards let me know if you play with any of these if any of these are in your deck 
Rex. As always, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.